Hello. Let's see. What day is today? <clears throat> it's the 9th of November, 2012. What's going on? Okay. Today's a bit of a snowy day. <clears throat> and, uh, this video is about, um, Steve Paulson and Stuart Kaufman. And Steve Paulson is a fellow of the Templeton Cambridge uh, program for journalists or something like that. Anyway, and that's a Templeton Foundation sponsored group. And anyway, this uh, Steve Paulson guy has gotten his camel's nose under uh, a couple of my local public radio stations. And so I made one video, and this is another video that is with some additional comments <clears throat> responding to an exchange that I found uh, yesterday where uh, Mr. Paulson and Mr. Kaufman are uh, basically talking to each other. And... Uh, so anyway, uh, there's a, you know, journalists claim to be neutral, but just the way the questions you actually ask and the way you ask them indicates your own biases and stuff. So there's no such thing as, you know, objective journalism, really. But anyway, whatever. Um, so I read a, another exchange between this Paulson guy and uh, Templeton Foundation. Templeton Foundation Wonder Boy Steve Paulson and Richard Dawkins, and Paulson got really quite upset. And then I was reading the interview with uh, be the exchange between Paulson and uh, Kaufman, and he, uh, Paulson, also took that the opportunity during that interview to basically denigrate uh, Dawkins, you know, supposed views, according to Paulson. So, um, these dudes, they're not really theists in the traditional sense. They don't believe in the Mormon God who had literal sex with Mary, the mother of Jesus, or who uh, has create, creates worlds without end, or who has endless sex with many wives in heaven to create spirit babies. Um, they don't believe in the Muslim God who came down to uh, Mohammed. They don't believe in any of that. They just believe in a sense of awe, uh, an emergence, a consciousness, a universal consciousness that cannot be explained through reductionism. And even if we mention the word reductionism, that is evil to these people, to these two guys and to similar people. So they think the best way to uh, get the, what they, what Paulson called the Abrahamic God people to believe in a different God, you know, basically their kind of nebulous nothing God, or God of awe, God of the universe, whatever. Maybe Spinoza's God. Okay, whatever. Um, they think the best way to do that is to uh, basically not criticize other people's beliefs too much and to just uh, kind of proclaim the value of do two simultaneous things. The first thing is uh, proclaim the value of having the word God be defined as awe or consciousness or something undefinable, something something science can't touch. So it's important that, that one key element is that this awe or consciousness or emergence not be defined by science. One key thing, okay? It, it's just so magical and so m mystical and so wonderful that to even consider that science can try to work out, you know, the whys and wherefores of that and hows is like sacrilege. So that's one people. 
And then the second point is to not really be honest about what these other people believe. You know, like... Anyway, and so basically these guys have spent... They haven't spent one day in a real religion. You know. Uh, they haven't spent a day as a Mormon, or as a Scientologist, or as a Jehovah's Witness, or... Um, as a, even a, you know, a conservative Christian, a Baptist, any of that stuff. And so they don't know what they're talking about when they say that the people who believe in the Abrahamic God, you know, they would be put off by so-called reductionism. And then they get stuck into the weeds of Paulson and Kaufman about how, if we even think about how there might be some value to reduction, so-called reductionism, but that means we can't explain things like consciousness. And that's just bullshit. I mean, basically, they want to blow smoke and keep their heads in the sand. So, who, who can we look to to try to, you know, figure out what consciousness might mean? Well, three names come to mind. Daniel Dennett, Sam Harris, Stephen Pinker. And so there's other people out there, but those are like, you know, three guys who have been talking more about this type of stuff. And people accuse Dennett of being a reductionist. And so, I mean, he probably is, but so what? That doesn't mean you exclude answers that come from more complex interactions, like neuroscience, like evolution by natural selection, like, anyway, a complex systems interact and things happen. Maybe we can have science work to address those things as well. And just because you want to learn how quantum physics works, or how quarks work, or how the Higgs boson works, doesn't mean you also can't have a field of science called neuroscience, or even an, an emergent science of morality that Sam Harris has talked about. Okay? So, basically these guys are coming from the hippie dude, smoked up deal where you think, oh man, everything is so cool and I can't explain why the universe is Oh, so cool, man. Oh, dude, and scientists, they can't explain anything with their reductionism. And they make me upset with their reductionism, those scientists like Mr. Dawkins. That's basically what Templeton chump darling uh, Steve Paulson is talking about. But it's just not true. And as someone who did believe in a version of the Abrahamic God, I can tell you that the science of, you know, it was in a physics class where I finally realized that the stuff I was learning in physics class was a whole lot more interesting than the bullcrap they taught me in Mormonism. So, you know, I'm just one example, but there's other examples, and basically, think about all the people who've watched Carl Sagan's Cosmos series. <coughs> and, uh, you know, they found awe and wonder, and then a lot of kids became scientists because they watched that series. Okay? And I don't think Carl Sagan took the view that there were some domains of existence which science would never touch, which is basically the position of Kaufman and Paulson from, from what I can see. So, this Templeton bullshit trying to sneak the camel's nose of non-overlapping magisteria and of basically this kind of the same camel's nose of creation so-called science. It's kind of the same deal being snuck into the domain of, you know, public radio. And public radio is a place where you're supposed to have reason and uh, honesty. And if you have people say you can't, there's a domain of existence that 
just cannot be probed by science. And that and the people who, like Dawkins and Dennett and Harris, they don't have awe because they see how, yes, a reductionism can help reveal things, but so can neuroscience, and so can the evaluation of complex systems interaction. So, so there you go. So Paulson doesn't like Dawkins? Well, he can go fuck himself for all I care. The guy is just kind of a front. He's like the, uh, the front boy for Templeton, the front boy coming in to fuck up public radio. So, that's just my opinion. Right? So anyway. But uh, the bottom line is that the history of science and religion has shown that uh, um, religion was a first attempt. You know, and religion is a natural phenomenon, but it got a lot of answers wrong. And for a very long time, if you questioned religion, you got killed. And even in Islamic countries, if you question religion there, you get killed. So Christianity was forced to go through a renaissance and an enlightenment. Islam has never had a sustained renaissance or enlightenment, but although maybe they're having theirs now with our help. Um, so, if you but if you just examine the history of science and religion, you'll see that science is really the best method humans have developed so far to separate fact from fiction. Religion held us down for thousands of years, and science took us to the moon. Science makes your stupid cell phone work. Science makes your computer work. Science makes your GPS work. So don't be a dumb shit when it comes to science. And believe these people who think that, you know, there's non-overlapping magisteria. When the religious people have been imposing themselves on the whole domain of existence for thousands of years, and now that they're being pushed back by science because science is a more accurate method of fact-finding, now they're trying to find the last vestiges of stuff they can hold on to, such as an emergent consciousness, or uh, some other unexplainable thing that these dudes want to hold on to, but they don't believe in your God. If you're an Abrahamic religionist, if you're a Jew or a Christian or a Mormon or whatever, uh, Steve Paulson and Stuart Kaufman, they don't believe in your God, and you don't believe in theirs unless you're a liberal, a hidden liberal in those, in these religions. You now there's a few, there's always a few hidden liberals in all, in every religion. But in the more conservative ones, you gotta keep your mouth shut, otherwise you get uh, kicked out of your family or killed. So, anyway, that's my video for this morning. And it looks like a snowy day, but I'm still going to work. Alrighty. Side jam. Okay. Alright, so this is... Okay, I lost battery there. Placed the battery on my camera. So anyway, as I was saying, Paulson was saying, was interviewing this one guy who... Well, anyway. Or no, Paulson's basic... Uh, kind of stance was that maybe consciousness is like connected to this other reality that continues after you die. Uh, but that's nice. But the thing about it is um, he's basically an advocate for uh, uh, there's two things. One is he's a darling of the Templeton foundation. Okay. A foundation that kind of uses subterfuge to, in my opinion, to, uh, to, you know, bankroll journalists who suck up, who basically tow their smoke-blowing uh, program to confabulate and mix science and religion together. 
and to kind of make it thing like seem like oh science can't know everything and there's non overlapping magisteria and that type of stuff you know just to keep the lines blurred as much as possible and also in the past they've done things like advocate to have bible study in school and stuff like that and um, I mean, I'm all for a comparative religion class, but there's a difference between that and the type of Bible study that would be advocated for by the evangelicals who want to take over the public schools and stuff like that. Um, so, anyway, there's more information on the links, you know, that I will include uh, after this video. Um, so, one pro problem is the guy is a darling and is kind of sponsored by the Templeton Foundation. And then the um, second problem is that he runs a radio show that isn't just on his own little network. It's provided for free to my public radio station, to two of them here, and presumably to other ones. Oh, free to at least one, but maybe to two. And who knows to how many more. And so why is it provided free? Well, I don't know. Maybe the Templeton Foundation wants to use Templeton's money to get his kind of smoke blowing going to as many places as possible. So, anyway, there's something in the Enlightenment called uh, science and reason. And science is where you test to see whether things are true or not, or whether you can figure out how things work. And uh, so basically this Paulson guy, he's kind of a smoke blower guy. And he gloms on to anybody who can help him blow smoke. You know. And he's a darling of Temple, the Templeton Foundation because he's willing to blow smoke. And Dawkins and the so-called new atheists make him very upset, apparently, this Paulson guy. And his kind of cohorts, you know. So, anyway, if it was just him alone, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. But the guy has a, a national radio show, and he shows his own biases by how he interviews people and by what he talks about in his own little talks that are available online. And so, that's that. So, I mean, I don't want to turn on my public radio station and hear someone saying, some woman complaining about the fact that her son doesn't believe in God, okay? Or, one time on a KUER pledge drive, I, I heard them say, oh, to the best of our knowledge, is so great. Or, or no, actually, it was Krista Tippett's program, which has been renamed one or two times. Krista Tippett, on her program, she was saying, uh, which she's also a Templeton darling. Um, she 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 kind of has a similar program, which is now called On Being or some such thing. Uh, in the past, it was called Speaking of Faith. But anyway, they were having a deal around her program where she was saying that uh, where the people in the pledge drive were saying that uh, uh, wasn't it, isn't it great how we can have a program where we all get to have respect for religion. But, you know, religion should only be respected if it deserves respect. You know, just just because you're religious or you're uh, you're just because you say, oh, I belong to a religion, that doesn't automatically mean that we need to respect your religion. Let's examine what your religion does, what it teaches, what impacts it has, uh, whether it values honesty and integrity, or whether it kind of promotes dishonesty, uh, intellectual and emotional dishonesty, uh, whether it helps people live their lives or whether it hurts them. Let's, let's put, put all the cards on the table and see what the full situation is. So we don't, anyway, so I don't need any public radio station, especially one connected to the state of, the state of Utah or some state government, saying that, uh, you know, we should be respecting religion. That's not the place of the government to say whether, what, the, the state 
KUER in the you know is connected with the state of Utah, and they don't get to tell me well, you got to respect religion. No, I don't. You don't get to tell me that. Okay. So that's the problem with that. And then Templeton, which loves Krista Tippett, also loves Steve Paulson. And so Steve Paulson gets on his program and says, oh, well, science can't touch the non overlapping magisteri of consciousness because it's just so unexplainable. And then he'll have kind of interviews on there with various people, and he kind of sides, kind of tends to side with the woo-woo people. And uh, so that's not what my public radio space is for. I mean, it's kind of like supposed to be, like I was saying earlier, a refuge for the people who are the children of the Enlightenment. You know, the the jocks have their station. The the hate mongers have their station. It's conservative talk radio. Um, and then we got our station. You know, kind of the people who went to college who have one more than one brain cell, who don't give a shit about sports, who don't give a shit about. Um, whether, you know, who screws who in their own bedroom or by what method, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, anyway, we got our station. We don't want the woos on there. They can go some other place. So keep the woos off. That's the bottom line. All right?